I consider myself a bit of an introvert, but ever since starting college, I love meeting new people. And it's because the conversation always goes something like this. We introduce ourselves, share our names, maybe where we're from, and then my favorite question to answer literally ever gets asked. And they go, what's your major? And I get really excited inside because I'm so proud of myself. And I say, computer science. And the reaction is always somewhere along the lines of complete shock or utter confusion. And I get it. I walk around everywhere I go in ridiculous platform heels or black leather pants. And everyone kind of expects computer science majors to look like Mark Zuckerberg. And I'm not sure if I could be more of the complete and polar opposite of that. So I understand. I, though, had the privilege to learn about computer science and engineering in a pretty female-centered bubble. That bubble was actually so bad that the first time I went to the Worldwide Developers Conference, which is where Apple hosts its keynote every year, I was pulled into this side room to have a conversation with some man, and I had no idea who it was, but I pride myself on being able to have a conversation with literally anyone. So I'm talking to this guy about Apple technology, Swift, Apple's developing language, and the importance of teaching young women to code. Meanwhile, I have no clue who I'm talking to. Only upon leaving the room to a rush of tech bros screaming, oh my god, that's Tim Cook, as I would have had it been Harry Styles, did I realize I was talking to the CEO of Apple. It was a little embarrassing, but goes to show how female-centered my tech bubble was. My interest in engineering started in fifth grade when I joined a summer pre-college program that was all girls. That year, the curriculum was centered around aeronautical engineering and other STEM subjects, so science, technology, engineering, and math. I was probably the only 11-year-old in existence that was over the moon at spending her summer learning about aeronautical engineering. But I was really excited and I kept going back every summer to learn about different engineering disciplines with the loveliest group of girls I met there. And those girls were so cool. Most of us were black and or Latina and we were amazing slicing cow hearts for biomedical engineering, teaching ourselves pre-calc and discrete math before even starting high school, building rockets and all of the most amazing STEM stuff you only see on the TV. So through deductive reasoning, obviously, I just assumed that white guys in STEM didn't exist. None of the students really fit this category, and I didn't have any professors that looked like them either. I thought us women of color really own this, until that bubble was bursted when I started high school. In high school, I started computer science on the AP level because I skipped a year in math, so I leveled out of all the prerequisites pretty quickly. I guess that edge gave me the reassurance that I needed, but my insecurity in computer science came from a place that I never expected. It was the first time I was one of the only women, women of color especially, in a technology course I was taking. Most of the students were white guys, which was a full 180 from the summer pre-college course I took. On top of that, I walked in the room on the first day in five inch gold embroidered booties in a room where khaki pants and a polo top was about as high fashion as things got. Our class also created a culture around computer science that I grew to dislike. Women were rarely ever highlighted, especially black and brown women and all of our conversations about innovations were discussed in the context of valuing profit and exploitation. A world where writing code to make money was deemed more valuable than writing code to help people. I became less and less seduced with becoming the next Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg and really started to question whether computer science would be the best fit for me. I became really insecure that I would never be masculine enough or white enough to have a successful entrepreneurial career in STEM. I started to ask myself a lot of questions. Would I always feel like an outcast here? Was I doing more self-harm than good by continuing to force myself into a space where I'd likely always be the only black and or Latina woman in the room? Would my passion for computer science continue to taper off with the hyperfixation on profit in STEM education. 
Would it be feasible and absolutely necessary for me to build Cher's Closet app from the movie Clueless? Yes, the answer is yes. And that's the thing, is whenever I felt distanced or disconnected from the world of computer science, my personal passions always brought me right back. Because being a young black Latina woman has always given me a large canon of coding ideas. I just needed a safe space to build them. So eventually I stopped looking for my niche in computer science at high school and really started to lean into extracurricular programs to fill that void. A place where I could embrace my black and brownness because who I am is an asset to my programming, not a disadvantage. I found my true home in computer science at Code with Classy, a coding program for young girls to navigate the world of programming free of restraints and societal constructs. It's where I learned that being a black woman in technology is impressive and that the representation that I bring to the table is not only valuable, but absolutely necessary. It's where I learned that it's more than okay to code something just because it's for the good of society, something that the world needs. It was actually encouraged. It's where I could walk in with the brightest red lip and sharpest winged eyeliner and feel at home chugging through signal abort after signal abort, which is the most annoying Xcode error ever. After feeling so invisible for so long, Code with Classy made me feel seen more than seen. Code with Classy made me feel like a star. And my experience at camp taught me a few things. The first thing that I learned was to never shy away from my identity, because who I am makes it into everything I code in a very special way. Then I realized that my fulfillment in computer science came from writing code to help people, not to create a product, and that's OK. The last thing I noticed was no matter how hard a problem may seem to be, I am more than creative and intelligent enough to generate some sort of solution. So fast forward to the week of May 25th, 2020, and I'm sitting on my couch staring at my TV with what felt like the entire country. The death of George Floyd seemed to mute the world around me. I was lost in a sea of helplessness because what had happened felt so far away, yet so deeply personal. But before I could even feel like there was nothing I could do, I remembered everything Code with Classy had taught me. Goodness, action, identity. I almost immediately dived into my computer. I coded a website called PB Resources, a resource and education tool in honor of all those who have lost their lives at the hands of white supremacy and police brutality. I spent hours upon hours scouring the internet for petitions, bail funds, places to donate, explanations for our complex conversations around race, and anything else I could find on the topic. In the end, I created an encyclopedia of tools to aid in the fight against racial injustice. And since its release, over 500,000 people have used it. I created a tool that represented my blackness, my femininity, and my passion for equitable access. It was one of the first times I realized that I didn't have to lose any of those things to be a successful programmer. That's what I think the true power of computer science is. It's not AI and Boston Dynamics or data mining and Facebook. It's about writing code to help people, communities, societal situations, even if it's free especially if it's free. That's what the true power of coding is. It's writing code to help communities at no cost because it's the right thing to do. And I think that could be the standard if the industry just took one second to listen. Thank you.